Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the GeekCast stream um, with our special guest, Martin, who uh, doesn't want to show his pretty face today. Um, also with us, we have fake Darren and real Darren, which is uh, just amazing. We have two Darrens with us tonight, um, and we're going to be covering something that uh, has probably been lacking in the in the community as far as uh, information uh, goes, uh, you know, and uh, we're going to be covering network monitoring inside of Automate. Uh, and there have been several products uh, that have sprung up in the in the market recently about this. And uh, so uh, I'm, for one, I'm glad to have uh, redone network monitoring in, um, inside of Automate. And I'm glad that uh, we have someone uh, with such intimate knowledge doing that. So, uh, Martin, you like to say hello? Yeah, uh, good, evening, good evening, everyone. Hope everybody is uh, ready for the next hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Um, so yeah, this should be a uh, this should be a a fun evening. I'm hoping lots of people learning new things and uh, pushing up on some old skills, maybe. Ooh, nice. Um, and like I said earlier, we have real Darren with us as well. Um, I would say we I'd introduce fake Darren, but unfortunately uh, his audio is broken. So, real Darren, would you like to say hello? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here also. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, short and sweet. Um, so a couple things, uh, I want to, to mention before we get started. Um, we are still running, uh, a donation drive. Um, it is an ongoing donation drive. So if you want to contribute, um, to the site's running costs for the servers and infrastructure we run here, um, uh, you can do so. There's a, if you look in the bottom of Twitch, there is a link you can click on there. Um, you can go to the website. Um, there's a donate button in the upper right hand corner. You can do so there as well. Um, if you uh, feel free to contribute, uh, any amount works. We don't care if you can contribute. Um, we appreciate it. Um, and one more thing I'll mention before we actually get started. Uh, Martin is doing this as a community member, not as uh, anyone else. So. That's all we're going to be discussing. Um, so we're going to try to keep it on track as far as community goes. Um, we will try to answer as many questions as we can. We'll filter them in when we feel they're appropriate. So if you have questions, please ask them. Um, but we want to try to stay on topic and stay uh, inside his role as a community member uh, and freely giving information. So if you personally want to freely give information on one of these fantastic podcasts, we're here to help. So if you want to, to be a guest host, um, and you want to have fun with us uh, for a couple of hours, uh, let us know um, and uh, about the topic you'd like to cover, and we'll probably set it up. It's, uh, we, we enjoy doing these. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, Martin, are you ready? I uh, think I'm as ready as I ever will be. Yep, right. let's go. All right. So, uh, yeah, my name is Martin Kia. Um, I've obviously been in the community since it's been around. Uh, and tonight, what I wanted to do for you guys, uh, this session is all for you guys uh, for the network monitoring aspects uh, in Automate, formerly known as LabTech, obviously. So a little bit about me, um, ConnectWise Automate Product Manager, um, responsible for all things scripting and network probe. Um, I've been an Automate LabTech admin since 2012. Um, I also found MSP Geek way back in 2013. For those of you who are new to the community, thank you very much for joining. Um, I've worked in the IT industry for about 15 years now and eight specifically in the MSP space. So like six of those have been directly, you know, with uh, Lab Tech and Automate. So what we're going to cover tonight, um, as we all know, network monitoring, but we're going to get into certain specifics with it in uh, using Automate. So Obviously, I don't want to assume a knowledge here that everybody has. Um, so I, I'm going to start off with the basics. I won't go into them for very long, but I just want to make sure that we have the bases covered and we know what we're talking about. Um, so first off, what is SNMP in a MIB file? And then we're going to go into a demo. And tonight, um, the demo is going to cover detection templates, device libraries, SNMP remote monitors, and offline alerting and ticketing. Collection templates I've put at the end there based on um, based on how we do for time. So if we uh, manage to squeeze that one in there, uh, we will. So a uh, few ground rules. 
uh, just before we get started. All right, this is not about device discovery. Um, this is all about device detection. Um, it is not official ConnectWise documentation. I'm just doing this out of my personal time because right now um, we're getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot of questions in Slack. How do I do this? How do I do that? So I figured it'd just be best if I just get you all on the call and just, you know, kind of speak it all at once. Um, so it's not a support session or an IT nation, nation session either. It's not a bug hunting hour or opportunity to tell me what's flawed. And that goes to you, fake Darren. Um, so, he's gonna, well, he'll do his best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically this session is just knowledge gaining and sharing. Um, so this is for you. Let's just chill, have some fun. And if uh, whatever time zone you are in allows it, Go grab yourself a beer. Let's relax and uh, let's see how this goes. Okay. So first off, what is SNMP? Well, as we all know, or most know, simple network management protocol. Turns out it's not that simple after all. Um, mainly used for reporting, although the the applications that this has are like there's just so many of them. But the main one is obviously reporting, and that's one that we're going to focus on uh, today or tonight. Um, or wherever you are in the world, I guess. Good morning. Uh, so it's standard up to a certain point. And what, I, and what I mean by that is this. Every network device manufacturer puts a certain set of MIBs and OIDs in their devices. Once they've got the basics in, then they kind of go wherever they want to. There's no standard across the board as a whole. It's more so, okay, well... HP, they're very standard if you get HPs. Um, Micratic, another uh, manufacturer that we're going to show tonight, um, those are all the Micratic appliances. Are standard. So like within the, own, within the specific vendor, it's more standard than it is across the whole gambit of network devices. Um, so this is why I've got here manufacturer first, device type second. This talks about the current uh, detection template tree and the way that that's set up right now. It leads with device type, and then it goes into manufacturer. Well, yes, it's standard, but not every one storage device says, I'm a storage device. There's no like one specific OID for that. And even if there was, there's no one specific OID on a printer that says I'm a printer or on a wireless access point. But if we can nail it down to manufacturer first, that's going to set you better up. That's going to set you up for success a lot better. I'll mention real quick, uh, especially when you think about a multifunction type device. So even if there's something that says that this is a printer, uh, it might also be a scanner. And so, you know, just detecting a specific type of device is really hard. You know, think about firewalls that are, is it a switch? Is it a router? Is it a bridge? Oh. Yeah, for um, sure. And there's also, uh, I don't know if you're, I was reading, so I don't know if you covered this specific point, but uh, mm -hmm the manufacturers are responsible for setting their own MIBs. Um, so they could very well overwrite themselves. Correct. They are responsible for it, but there is no overarching governance that, you know, there's no, um, what's what I'm looking for? There's no like overarching compliance that they have to absolutely do this. Um, it was like that back in the 90s and like early 2000s and even up to about 10 years ago. But right now, they're, they're not really, uh, they're not under any side of any kind of cosh for not doing it. Yeah, there's, so, no, there's no compliance and standardizations yeah. for it aside from the basic overall point. There's no one watching right. if HP, HP could decide to make the same MIB uh, and OID that Dell has and they could both have the same one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And there's no one and, uh, preventing that. Another thing as well, one thing that I experienced back in the UK, Kyocera and Olivetti, both fairly you know, popular manufacturers over there. Um, and forgive me if I got this the wrong way around, somebody can probably correct me, but Kyocera sold their firmware or a flavor of their firmware to Olivetti. Then Olivetti took that, put in their name into certain OIDs, but then the rest of the stuff, they just kind of left it because you know they didn't want to go through all the work. So now... You have an instance where some management devices will say, "Oh, you have an, you have a Kyocera printer, but it's physically an Olivetti, 
So there's a lot of trading that goes on with the firmware, and HP are pretty good about trying to keep a uh, rein on that. But you know, the, it it just gets very difficult, and it's all of, and it's all of these build up to different challenges that we have to try and overcome as techs to make sure that we're doing the right thing for you know what we have. So anyway, moving on a little bit. So what if I told you 1.3.5.8.5.1.10 equals 64? It's going to mean nothing. It's not some hidden mathematical symbols in the dots or anything like that. That's just it, all right? Now, obviously, without context, that means nothing. So this is what we need a MIB file for. It's a management information base. That's what it stands for straight away. Um, and it has a hierarchical, hierarchical can't say it, structure. Uh, we normally call that like the, um, the MIB tree. So you got like the one, then, then there's five branches, but you go down the third. Then there's eight more branches and you go down the fourth. So like one, four, three. And it basically gives a bit of context to those OIDs, the um, object identifiers. So you can do a lot of things without a MIB. I mean, you can walk a device without a MIB, not a problem at all. Good luck trying to make sense of it, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, some values that are contained in OIDs can speak for themselves, like serial number, IP, MAC address. But really, without that MIB, you don't really know what that number is telling you. So to try and make it go, to try and um, portray that in a way in which we're a little bit more familiar with, I'm going to use the registry editor. And this should help clear that up. Clear it up. So, if you know, if anybody is on their PC right now, if they want to, they can either do even walk through this with me if they want. Um, so we're going to use this as a comparison. So, computer is the first node of the registry edit, a registry editor. The third option down is local machine, the f and then you go down the list, and the fifth one is software, and then the eighth one down. That one may change on your system. Fair enough. But then the fifth one down is service, and then one and 10. So we know HK Local Machine Software Lab Tech Service ID is 64. Think of that when you think of OIDs and MIBs. The OID is where in the tree, and the MIB is telling you what it means. So is that, is that pretty uh, a good comparison, would you say? Fake Darren? Real Darren? I think that's a good comparison. It's a very apt description of how to properly diagnose a MIB and an OID. An, an OID. <laughs> awesome. Uh, just so you know, guys, um, I do have the Twitch chat and also the Slack chat open on another machine on the side here. So apologies if I'm, uh, you know, missing questions here or whatnot, or like you, you know. So we'll just we'll yeah, just keep no, going. If, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll catch them. Um, I have three monitors, and one of those monitors is currently being forced to be used by OBS. So the other two are Twitch and okay. Slack, so feel free. Cool. All right. Yeah, just making sure we don't miss any questions, because this is a very fundamental, like, basic principle of OIDs and MIBs. And the registry editor, which most of us are in daily, we all, we're all aware of that. Obviously, we don't think of numbers in the registry because, you know, we already have the descriptions. So, demo time. Uh, detection templates. Uh, the other day, Jay Slagle, I wonder if he is on the chat right now. About four days ago, he didn't know it was me presenting, although he may have had a hunch. And he said, you know what, detection templates with no collection are mostly useless. Well, I hope he's on the call because I am going to prove him wrong. Ooh, burn. Burn. Uh, is he on the call? I think he said he'd try and make it, but he might just get the... Uh... Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so then we're going to go into device libraries, uh, group-based SNMP remote monitors. We're actually going to do standard device SNMP remote monitors first because if you remember on the last Geek Slack uh, cast, sorry, uh, Mendy said that Automate doesn't really do SNMP remote monitors. We'll kind of forget about those. It doesn't do a good job. Well, I'm going to burn him too. So <laughs> uh, offline alerting and ticketing. And again, like I said, if we get a little time, we'll do collection templates as well. I think that's it for my slides. So I'm going to go to my automate server. 
Okay. Let me know how the screen is looking. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I said that this call would not be about discovery. Um, so what I did just before the call is um, I did purge all my network devices. I restarted the automate agent on my probes, which happened to be control and also Windows 10 desktop QA01. And then I just ran another discovery scan and it picked up the devices. So the use cases, let's say you've just onboarded a client. You have no idea what their network is like. So you enable the probe on one of your agents. Let's go, I'll tell you what, I've had the control center open for a hot minute. So I'm going to restart it so that it doesn't time me out. Yep, and we'll be here for another 20 minutes. So it's, uh, let's, yeah. let's have some right. questions. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It has gotten much better in the recent, recent, recent past or future time. Yes. A realistic demo, Gav says. Yes, this is realistic. So, okay, yes, the computer, you know, the control center loads just, you know, same amount of time as you guys. So uh, there we go. So in this location, let's go to my home lab. This is actually at my house. Um, so... Control, my control server is actually my network probe server. Um, so let's, uh, oh, and it did a discovery scan and it found nine devices. Now I can confirm that this is accurate. This is good information here. Um, if I, I, I tell you what, we'll go over to this grid instead. We'll go to the probe. So yeah, again, back to Gav's comment, realistic demo. I am gonna set everything up right now. Nothing is set up in the system. Uh, in terms of remote monitors, so uh, we'll see how this goes. This will either fail spectacularly or work amazingly. It'll never really fall in the middle. So total devices, nine. So we see all nine devices. Now you'll see already that I have three devices showing me uptime. The reason for this is, let's do this. So this 101083.1, I can assure you, that is my switch. It is SNMP capable, but right now it does not. It was not able to pick up SNMP on that switch. However, I do have a wireless access point, which does have SNMP configured on it. You can see it there, MK Home Lab. And because I do have SNMP available here, I can now go to the SNMP Explorer and I can walk this device. Now, before I do that, I wanna show you my database just to uh, show you something. There is a table. It is called walk results, probe walk results. And whenever you walk a device, all the entries of the result, all the results get wrote to this database. So as you can see, there's nothing there right now. No tricks, no uh, nothing going on. I'll truncate it. So y'all believe me. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this wireless access point. I'm going to leave the start and go ID blank and we'll just go for, let's just go for 250 results and then we'll send the command. I'm purposely not going to, you know, no sleight of hand or anything like that. No magician tricks. So, I don't believe him. Uh, he's currently on his second computer, um, doing sleight of hand. Yeah, uploading <clears throat> results to his database. Thank you very much, Darren. Fake Darren. So I'm going to close this, and here are my results. Um, I actually put them in a tree form. So let's do that. Let's refresh. Okay, cool. So, going back to the registry earlier on. 1.3.6.1.2, well, this is what these mean here. So we can see that, so I know that this is a Mikrotik switch. Um, I know that because that's physically mine, this is my equipment. And one thing I'm noticing here right away is this, this particular OID, 136.121.120, this OID contains a value that is annoyed, but that's okay. This number here is key. 136, 141, 
will be the start of this value in every case. However, 14988 is specific to Micritic. Uh, there is a website you can go to. Um, I believe it's called, I, I can Google search it, uh, enterprise number. It's, I think it's this one. Yes. So if I go here, so 14988. So if I now do a find on this page, 14988, is it going to do it? There we go. 14988 is Micritic. That is their enterprise number. Now, this is, um, okay, so I said that there's no like overarching governance or compliance about how they do their MIBs. That is correct. However, all manufacturers must change this number. You will find in some cases where going back to Olivetti and Kayasera from earlier on, Olivetti did not change this number. They just obtained Kayasera's firmware. They probably bought, well, I hope that they bought it and they just put it in place as is. They didn't change this number. So there are instances where your devices are going to show up as a wrong manufacturer. And that is the reason for that. So what I want to do now is I want to go and figure out why on the switch, I did not have SNMP come through because, uh, oh yeah, here's the walk results, by the way. There we go. Device ID 610. Um, here's a little trick. Um, if you know what you're looking for specifically in the results, let's just say, let's find some text string that I would probably want to look for. Um, so let's say, I'll just go for this. So I want to filter, and I won't do it through a SQL query. I'll just use a filter just to keep it easy. Um, then what I could do here technically is if I know I'm looking for something specific, I could do this. Uh, what was that number? One, four, nine, eight, eight. Oops. Okay, great. There's that number. Boom. There's my OID. Quick way of finding it. So now when I go to my detection template, that helps me out, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, like I said, just onboarded this client. I know this is a switch. I went on site and I wrote out all the information of the network that I could. And um, I'm curious why this isn't showing up. So I'm going to slide over to another screen. So um, here is that particular switch. Um, I've already logged into it. Uh, I can see that this is... 10.10.83.1 on a local network. And now I'm going to go to SNMP. Now, obviously, I can't tell you exactly how every manufacturer does this. Every interface is different. But what we're looking for here is SNMP. And you can see here that it is not enabled. I have the community set already in prep for the call. Trap version is 2. And I'm going to enable it. And we'll click Apply and OK. I'll go back to that screen just to make sure it's stuck. Yep, it did. OK. So what I can do now is two things. Martin, can I interrupt you real quick? Uh, could you go back Absolutely. to you and look at communities? Uh, you said something, and uh, it kind of yep. maybe. Hmm. So I just want to point out, um, the trap community, SNMP traps are a way for a device to send an alert to a system. Uh, and so you mentioned the trap community is MK Home Lab. Uh, that is not the community that is being used to pull. Uh, so just specifically, you do have MK Home Lab here as one of your communities. Their address filtering is set for all addresses. Uh, so that's why it's going to work now that SNMP is enabled. Uh, I just wanted to distinguish that. The trap community could be blank. It's still going to work. You only need to set up traps when the device actually has to send something to a device. 
you know, to a collection server. For detection, you don't need to enable traps. Just wanted to make that point. That is a very good point as well. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, SNMP traps is the device telling you of a uh, condition, not you looking for it through a remote monitor, shall we say. Um, OK. So I have, thank you very much for that, Darren. Um, so I have now enabled SNMP on this device, which is at 101083.1. So two things I can do. I can either um, just open up the device and type in the community string here in the get field, or I can just run another discovery scan. I'm going to run a discovery scan. Um, where are we? Oh, initiate network scan. And that's going to kick that off. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, there was recently a, well, there has been a bug for quite some standing time where let's just say um, you scanned the network and you forgot to put SNMP in all your devices or you forgot to put it in the settings. I actually should have made that clear as well. I'm sorry. SNMP. So this is my community string, MK Home Lab. Previously, um, it would not update the network device on a new discovery scan with a working SNMP community string. You would then, you know, potentially have to go into many devices just to put in that string. Now, obviously, yes, you can do it through SQL, but I'm trying to stay in the control center as much as I can tonight. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, hey, Martin. Add this. Yes. What exactly does redetect devices do? We will get to that. Okay. Well, uh, Racket Ralph was asking if we could just do a redetect device. So rediscovery, we're doing a discovery of devices, and this is going to pull. Every time we discover a device, we if it was an existing device, it would be like, hey, I'm a device. Here's my information. And the database would be like, well, no, I already know about you, so I don't want to get any more information. Thank you. Because I don't want to run the risk of overriding what could be correct. So if you run a redetect, um, it doesn't perform that function in a redetect. It doesn't populate the SNMP string. It only does that on a discovery scan, or shall we just say a full scan. Um, discovery is us basically getting the information. Discovery is essentially finding devices. Detection is figuring out what they are, obviously through detection templates. Think of detection templates a little bit like searches or search criteria, but we'll definitely go into that uh, in a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what, while that is doing the scan, I will go to the uh, probe templates. We'll, we'll come back to that. Is everybody good on time and pace so far? Yeah, we're good. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. Fine. All right. So... While that's doing this discovery scan, I'm going to show you the probe template manager. So here are all the devices in my system. I'm just going to extend that a bit. OK. So you can see here that I've already got manufacturers associated to some of them. However, they are only network devices. I don't have any detection templates. Um, I actually, oh, another thing that I did before the call was I deleted all of my detection templates because I wanted to set these up so you could see how they actually operate. Um, so uh, we got, oh, sorry, yeah, that's right, we got 19. Okay, so a discovered device. A discovered device is obviously exactly that. These are devices that we discovered, pretty plain and simple. The manufacturer there uh, does show checkpoint software. This is populated via a database table on a MAC address lookup. Um, for those who are curious, um, I believe it's just called MAC table. Yeah. So this is a very large table, which if I go to checkpoint software technologies, okay. So if I do a search, Check point. Okay, so if the discovered device has a MAC address that starts with these three, then I'm going to label it checkpoint. 
Now, there is also another website uh, that I highly, uh, what is it now? Uh, MacVendors.com. Oops. And here you can basically type um, any, um, let's have a look here, C1. Okay, so Checkpoint Software. Now, another really nice thing about this website is this, the API. So API dash Mac vendors slash zero zero. Now I can enter the Mac address however I like. I can do it this way with a colon. I can do it with a dash. I can do it with no dash, but I'll just stick with the dash for now. And then you return this and it literally just spits out the name. Um, so just to kind of, let's do this. Yeah, so you can use that um, for whatever purposes you need, I guess. But I just wanted to make you all aware of that one as well. Very handy. I was going to say, I, I've used uh, Wireshark as a lookup. I just normally use Google and do Mac vendor search. And yep. uh, Wireshark has a lookup. Uh, Coffer.mac, I think, is a site that's been around. But I believe there is uh, pricing on this but it's like a ridiculously high amount, it's like a thousand requests a day for nothing. Or, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. So I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, so let me uh, clear the filter. So yeah, so that's, sorry, kind of rabbit hole. Uh, so yeah, so essentially that's why some of these are saying manufacturer, even though I don't really have any manufacturers specified here through a search. So. Let's go back to that discovery. That may be finished by now. It is. Awesome. So now I'll go to network devices. I'll do a refresh. And did that populate the data? Boo. Click refresh again. Nope. Hmm. Oh, well, that was the first demo, God. <laughs> but that's fine. I'll just type it. I've only got the one. But that should have worked. Okay, so I've saved that. There is no SNMP tab. So what I'm going to do here is refresh. I'm going to give that a minute. Actually, let's do a reload system cache. That's probably what it was. Always reload system cache. Yep. Should have known. If it's not system cache, it's DNS. Hmm? If it's not the system cache, it's the DNS. Oh, it's always DNS. Yeah. So this is what we call dead air, um, where nothing is really happening uh, until Martin gets to where he needs to go and starts talking again. Um, I'm doing what we call filler, where I'm just talking about absolutely nothing until he gets to All where right. he wants to go. So here we I go. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to change that to V2 as well. Sorry about this, guys. All right, so let me close that window, come back to that window. Okay, so as if by magic, this uh, SNMP community string populated. And now that it did, I can go to the SNMP Explorer. And this is device 604. And again, I will walk it. I'll only go for 300. Actually, I'll only do 200 this time because uh, I'll just make things run a little quicker. Go for 200. <laughs> Um, Engine, you can close this window. The value of leaving it open is that it's watching for the results as it's showing there. It saw that the probe picked up the request. It retrieved the values. You get all that interactive stuff. Uh, yep. But you can close that and kind of ignore it and then come back and hit refresh and see if the data's there. Correct. Um, so here we go. The uh, goodness. Who's, oh. My phone dinged because Gab used the word probe in his comment. I really should watch my uh, watch words. The anyway. fact that you just uh, the fact that you just said what your um, trigger oh, word yep. Okay, so <laughs> see, all right, you you was really muffled then for a moment. I don't know how close to the microphone you got, but that sounded rather intimate. Yeah, there's 
some some knobs were turning. You're good. Go ahead. All right. So, um, all right. So remember when we looked at the uh, results with the wireless device? It was a Mikrotik as well. They were both Mikrotik. And again, one four nine eight eight. So before I, uh, uh, let's, uh, do, do, do. okay, we're gonna go make a detection template. So let's do this. Uh, let's bring this down a little bit. I need a bit of screen space. All right. So we essentially want to take this number, and if that OID contains this, then it's a Mikrotik. So this is how we do that. So discover devices. That's just no detection path. It's just the devices that you have. Then the next path down the tree is responded, the parent device being discovered. So think of like HKLM software, again, like a tree. So the detection for this is an internal test. And the internal test is literally, do I have SNMP connectivity to this device? Well, on the Mikrotik, we know that we do. So now I can go ahead and create a detection template. Oh, sorry, first I'll create a device. And the device will be called Mikrotik. And the parent device is responded. We'll click Apply. Everything in here, every level is called a device. I mean, even if it's basically just a category, uh, it's just called a device. Correct. So now that I have a Mikrotik device, I now need to add a detection template to this. So we will go right click again and add detection template. Okay. Test for Mikrotik. I'm going to use the SNMP protocol. It's going to result in the Mikrotik. And the device type, I'm going to leave blank for now. Because I have a wireless uh, access point and a switch. So I don't even want to define the model either. This is just getting the manufacturer. So now I'm going to create what we would call a rule. So the rule, I'll do detection rule. Mikrotik. I'm going to match a regular expression for this particular OID. Now. I'm going to then come back over here, copy this value, and put it into that rule. And I'm going to take off this trailing one. And there is a right. reason for that. Uh, so I've got to say yep. uh, a few things, just you know how I am. Uh, OID is object identifier, just I like abbreviations to have definitions. And specifically, that is saying regular expression, and it really is, uh, which means that a period is a wild card. Now, the chance of a false positive is very, very small, uh, but I would uh, myself always do a backslash in front of the period because we are actually looking for a string that is like that literal with periods. Uh, so that is a regular expression pattern. So it should be like one backslash period three backslash six, you know. Gotcha. Okay. As long as that is, the chance of a false positive is very small. But if you were to do a shorter string, the period would be a wild card. Uh, just, just reminding everyone, regular expressions, learn them, love them. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so this is the rule that we're going to apply. Uh, to find Mikrotik. And what we're basically saying here is uh, verify that this OID matches this regular expression, which has the 14988 in it. Now, uh, I'm going to apply that. And, oh, device type. I do need to give it a device type of no device type. So I'll click Apply. How very handy. Uh, yes, I know, right? Uh, test of Mikrotik library. OK. So there is my Mikrotik. And if I click on Refresh, there we go. So we're going to run through the detection tree really quick. So detection path, so this is basically saying to get this device from a discovered device to a responded device, it has to pass the internal test. Then to go from responded device to Mikrotik, it has to pass this test, of which is, you know, contains this rule. 
Now you'll say, well, what if we needed, had multiple ways to detect a micritic? Because for some reason, not every micritic does this. Let's just say, um, what else do they do? Uh, outdoor antennas. Let's just say for whatever reason, they don't conform to the 14988. They're 14989. Well, what you would then need to do is create, you would think is create another rule here and then add it with this one. Well, that would actually be incorrect because if you have two rules in a template rule, if you have two rules within a detection template, they act as an and. So it's this and this and this. In addition to this checkbox, you would think that if you had three here, you could uncheck two of them and it would only really run one rule. Incorrect. It runs them anyway. It runs all of them. It's an unintuitive UI. I know this, but that's how it works right now. So if you do want to create a second rule for the outdoor antennas, and they were 14988, you would literally have to create another detection template with that rule, and then you would get test for critic 1, test for critic 2, and then it would be looking for, hey, if you have 14988 or 14989, you're a micritic. So I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. Now, I've made a change to the detection template tree, and obviously the remote agent, the probe, does not know anything about it. This is the control server, so I'm going to whiz over to that. There it is. This is my control server, and as you can see, my device library only has two devices. I have my discover device and a responder device with one detection rule, which is my internal test. Now, these work very similar to virus scanners, where the, de the settings for these are, again, wrote to the registry with their ID from the database. Now, I've just created that rule, and you can see that it's not come down to the probe. So what we need to do is send a refresh config command from the probe. Uh, I'm not in fast talk anymore, so this might take five minutes. Joke. Now with heartbeat, it'll go quick. It would, yep. So let's do a quick refresh here. Let's see what we get. Actually, let's go back to this command. See the progress of it, waiting for retrieval. And as everyone probably knows, uh, the probe commands are, are here in the UI, a different place from the remote commands for the computer, but they work kind of the same way. The probe uh, checks in, pulls them, returns response. Yep. There we are. So now that the refresh config is complete, we can go over to the registry and we can see, hopefully, um, do, do, do. there. So I now have a second detection, which is testing for Micritic. And this is my test, 14988. And you will see that device two, well, device one was my respondent. And my next device is Micritic. So the probe is aware. So now, this is where the demo gods will get me. I just know it. I now need to, I'm going to reload system cache here because that should have given me some uptime by now. You don't typically have to do this. Actually, um, I didn't look at the notice the probe history, but you know, just to highlight the differences, uh, when sure. we yep. edited the device, right? We added mm -hmm. that community until the probe gets a config refresh. The, the probe does not have that information, and so uh, you know, in the user interface, we were able to see the SNMP Explorer, and then finally, when we initiated the uh, the walk. Uh, you know, I don't know if at that point it uh, already would have known the community or not, but uh, just there is that little disconnect. You you can actually put the community in, but until the probe gets the updated information, it's not going to begin collecting with it. That is a very good point, actually. Um, and here we can see that we do have an uptime now for this device. Uh, if I can go to the... Nope, let me... Open up the probe again. Oh, 
What time are we on? Nine o'clock. Okay. So we'll go to network devices. I should now have an uptime. Yes, there it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a, a detection on this because I just set up my rule or my search, shall we say, uh, or my just like how you would do with the, uh, the virus scanners. You would add a virus scanner and then run an, run an update config command to the agent. Um, so now I'm going to run begin, commands, probe, run device detection. I'm going to give that a moment. Now you'll notice that this says rudaboard.com. And before I refresh this page, I will show you why. You see the MAC address here, it starts with 4C5E0C. So if I go back to this MAC table, oh, no, it was wrong. I forgot the uh, percent. Okay, so uh, here's a bunch of different MAC addresses associated to uh, Rudaboard, um, but the one that we were looking for specifically was 4C5E0C, and that's why this is stamped with Rudaboard. Um, where are we? There you go, 4C5E0C. You'll also notice here that I've got like Hyper-V guest VM. Um, that's a little different, and I also have VMware guest VM. The only, uh, just a quick FYI on how I got this uh, was through the MAC address. Um, Hyper-V and, well, sorry, Microsoft and the Hyper-V platform and VMware with the vSphere platform, or ESX platform, I should say. Um, their Mac, the VMs start with the MAC addresses, 00155D, and I totally don't know the VM one off the top of my head, but you can essentially come to this table Zero uh, zero fifteen. Oh, what was it now? Five D. Five D. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So you could essentially do this, and you can type in whatever you want, and this just makes it easy for me to figure out. Oh, hey, these network devices, which obviously don't have an agent on them yet, they're a guest VM for Hyper V. I think I also have it set up for. Uh, VMware Hyper-V, but we'll come to that. Sorry, VMware guest VM later. But that's just a little tip there for you. This data, this table, by the way, will uh, not get overwritten. So there's no worries about that going away. So anyway, where were we? We were redetecting devices. So if I refresh that, de that detection, it should have finished by now. Yes, it did. So now if I go to network devices and refresh, there we go. Now it says Micritic because it's now no longer relying on the Mac table to fill that column. This is a Micritic. So, hey Martin. Yes. That Mac table. You just said that uh, the Mac table won't get overwritten by anything from uh, that won't get overwritten at all. Um, does that mean that if we do a Solution Center update, that it, it won't drop that table and recreate it? Um, I have not installed any of those network device solution packs for a very long time. So yes, that may overwrite it. What about Someone, uh, patches that include updates to that table? Do you do a drop? That table is rarely updated. Well, yeah, but is it, it says, even though it's rarely updated on the rare occasion it is updated, do you, um, do you we guys don't. do a drop table or do you just do an insert? Typically we only do an insert. Um, I mean, it would be too much of an expensive, like, operation to do that. Usually, it's just an insert. Um, but I, I know that this table has not been touched for quite a while. So yeah, I think we all agree on that. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm just gonna uh, soak my water here. One minute. Sorry, mm, that was really ASMR. Oh my! <laughs> Beautiful ASMR of Martin drinking. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt it because now it's recorded and everyone has that. You are really muffled in your microphone. 
S- seriously? Sit back a little bit. You don't no, have to. I'm not on it. I'm, I'm like six inches away. Anyway, insert oh. comment here. All right. Hey. So. Okay. I'm going to so make that my ringtone we, for the we, conference. Okay. So we have been able to successfully detect these two Mikrotik devices as Mikrotik. However, um, I want to get a little bit more granular with them. How would I do that? Well, let's bring up both of these side by side and let's uh, see what's different, essentially. So here is my wireless access point and one string that stands out more than most, which I'm sure you'll all see here, is the one above the one that gives me the manufacturer. Now, this is the 136, 121, 110. This is where Mikrotik put in the name of the operating system and also the model of the switch or, well, the model of the device. Obviously, it's different for everybody, uh, every manufacturer. Um, But 1120 is always where they put this specific enterprise number. And I can't stress that oid enough because the detect, I'm just going to say it, the detection tree in the system today where it's device type led is not setting you up for success. It, it's just not. Um, I find it very difficult to get past the switch branch from time to time. You've got a, I was actually on the phone with a partner uh, the other day and he had perfect detection templates for Ubiquity, but they were underneath the um, wireless access point um, branch. So we moved them up a level under the responded device. And guess what? It worked. It's all about getting, and each of the branches of the tree have to hit. You have to match a rule on each branch. Um, So, okay, where was I? So here we go. We've got the model of the wireless access point here, which is RBCAP2N. And we also have the model of the switch, which is CRS125. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a detection for this wireless access point. So again, we'll copy this. And we'll go back to the probe template manager. So now, what's the name of my wireless access point? RBC. OK. So I'm going to add a device. And this is going to be my RB. C A P two M. To make this a little uh, smaller. Okay, sorry. Click apply. So there's my device, and I'll also, while I'm at this level, I'll do my switch as well. So I'll click on Mikrotik. I'm going to add a Mikrotik device, and I'm going to add. CRS 125, 24, full gig, 1S. Apply. Okay. So, oh, another thing here um, that I didn't show earlier on. Sorry. Um, on set, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're good. Um, okay. Sorry, you went really yeah, quiet there. Okay. Well, yeah, you I turned just... my mic off because if I type, it gets really, really loud. And you hear it clicky, clicky, clicky. Gotcha. Thousand okay. times. Um, I do have one quick question. Uh, uh, someone yes. mentioned that the probe does not scan the 1.3.6.1.4. tree. Say that tree one more time. <laughs> one dot three. Yep. Dot six dot one. Yep. Dot four. One three dot six. One three six one two one four. One three six one four. Ah, so so collapse the management. Yeah, right there. Yeah. I didn't walk that far. I tell you what. Um, can we get back to that? Yeah, no, you're Let good. Me, yeah, no, no, that's a. I mean, I'll, I'll see if my device does. But yeah, that's a good observation. We should uh, right, shoot me a PM with that. Uh, Particular branch and I can, it's uh, Eric. Eric, you know what to do. Oh, it was Eric. Yeah. I'm, jo- I'm joking. Hope you well, Eric. Long time no speak. It's a good thing. Uh, 
for, for what it's worth, uh, Eric was the one who uh, put me onto Micritic. I was after some advice for some like good home lab equipment, and uh, he actually suggested, uh, well, recommended Micritic. I tried it out, and I'll be honest, they've been rock solid. So uh, I have to look into that. I don't really yeah. trust Eric's opinion on things, but I trust yours. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I have full trust in Eric. I know. So, I'm just giving him a hard time because that's uh, that's what we're supposed to do. Exactly. So I have 20 <laughs> devices. So I have 20 devices that reply to SNMP, of which two of them are Micritic. Awesome. So now I want to get a little bit more granular with that. So I've created my device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create detection for both of these. And I think that will, yeah, that gives me the details for both. Um, let's make this a little smaller. I still want to be able to see the values. All right, that's good. All right, so we're going to create another detection template. And the device type. So this is where we do the type, not on the tree, but on the actual template itself. So the manufacturer, yes, we have filled this in already. So this isn't really going to hurt it. Uh, and the model is R, B, C, A, P, 2, N. And we're going to create a rule. Rule name, uh, detection rule for Micritic. I'm just going to do, yeah, I'll just do it properly. Uh, what is it? R, B, C, A, P, 2, N. <laughs> So the OID that we're going to use is oh, uh, 1.3.6.1.2.1.1.0. Yep. And we're going to look for RBCAP2M. Click OK. And I'm going to apply that. Uh, real quick, full disclosure. Not really sure they do anything. Um, I can obviously ask a developer, but for the sake of the you know for the purposes of tonight, I don't know what these do. But just have this set like, to to network devices because obviously we're targeting a network device. I know I've had a few questions about this. I don't really think it matters. So I don't know, but I'm going to mention. Uh, I know that there is the self detection SNMP that you can enable on agents. Uh, so possibly mm. there's something there, but I, okay. I don't don't use that either. I only target no. network devices. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay, so we want to, what did we do? Okay, so we click on this guy. We created detections. Okay, so here we go. So you test for SNMP, you test for Micritic, which we've already validated, and now you need to test for this. And that way you will get stamped as a wireless access point. This is the main reason why you'd want to dig into the models just so you can specify the device type. Because obviously with Cisco, you can have any type of device and HP, any type of device. So here we're going to add a detection template for this switch. We're going to test for Microtic uh, SNMP. We're going to find it in there. This is a switch. The manufacturer will be, oops. Necrotic. The model is CRS one twenty five twenty four G one S. Oops. And I'm going. Nope, I'm drunk. Hang on. CSR. Nope. Wow. Twenty four G. Okay, we got there in the end. Copy that. Make a rule. I'm looking for this in that OID 1.3.6.1.2.1.1.1.1.0. .1 .1 .1 .1 Detection rule, Micritic CRS125. Now, these don't have to match, by the way, on the rule names. Uh, this is just my OCD, so uh, I apologize. So. And there we go. So we apply that. And we go to the library, and we can see that the wireless access point has a detection template, as does the switch, CRS125. CRS125, here it is. So again, we've made a change. So we need to send an update config. 
to the probe and it's still in fast talk. So we'll do commands, probe, refresh config. We'll swing over to the probe again. We've still got the two. So we should be expecting to see two more devices show up here and two more detections. While we wait for that, let's have a quick, oh, there they go. So detection three, Mikrotik, yep. There's my wireless access point. There is my switch. Here is the rule and the device type as well. So, so far, so good. Now what we'll do is we'll see that this column here says network device. We should now see that they will change to their respective devices. So I'm going to do this one, run device detection. Now, because we've run that against the probe, the parameter that it feeds that particular command is a zero, implying not a specific device ID, just all device IDs. And uh, yeah, refresh config, the code is 64 layer. That's the ID of the probe. So while we're waiting on that, Martin, mm -hmm. uh, I had an individual who asked a question a couple days ago, um, but do you know of a good way to filter SNMP traps? by word, specific words? Um, that would, so for specific words in an SNMP trap, that would probably be through regex. Uh, Darren speaks in regex. Uh, that's fake and real Darren. Um, I'll be honest, regex is not one of my strongest skills. Um, but yes, it can be done. Uh, you would use the contains. I wasn't going to touch on traps tonight, actually. Um, that's fine. Uh, he had a question but, a couple days ago. Um, Okay, okay. So I figured uh, I'd ask it now, considering he poked us again about it. Gotcha. All right. So, um, so yeah, detection has now uh, successfully run. We go over here. We see that the network device, we should now see the bottom one change to network switch and that go to wireless access point. Look at that. That is awesome. So a lot of people said that I onboard a client and I specify all the devices as printers or wireless access points. I don't have detection templates for them, but um, I just, you know, set it anyway. But then overnight, it goes back to network device because no detection template was found. Therefore, it just goes to network device. Well, I'll tell you why it goes back to network device. That's because of this. The response, the discovered device. I go to inventory here. Uh, is it responded? I believe it just defaults to network device. It is set somewhere. I can't recall right now where it is, um, but that's just kind of like the the go to for it. So now we're going to move into monitors. I mean, I have obviously a ton of different manufacturers and I have a ton of different devices. Um, I only have 20 that are communicating through SNMP right now. But um, yeah, one thing I do have, which I'm okay sharing and I'll have to do it at the end of the call because I can't switch over to Slack right now. Um, I actually have a uh, SQL query I'll show you. Um, okay. So before we go into monitors, I want to show you this real quick. Basically, what I have set up is a SQL query that will first create the device library for a ton of manufacturers. Um, just so you know, um, these are all set with unique IDs. So this can run on any system. Now, this particular UID here is specific to the probe. The probe, this is hard coded into the probe, but the rest of them can be unique. That one must be as it is. So that's why I've kind of laid this query out just like this. So I insert that one specific, and then I make a change to that. And then I insert the responder device underneath that, where the parent is the responder device, sorry, the, di the discovered device. And then I have a bunch of manufacturers. Now, to take that one step further, to match those manufacturers, I also have um, device libraries. 
So these are the devices, sorry, the detection, the detection templates for each of those devices that we just created in the library. So that's the bit where I did a right click add device. And then taking that one step further, I then have a rule for each one of these, which again, this is me now creating the actual detect the rule that lives in the detection template for each of these manufacturers. Now you'll notice that a constant, well, 90% of the time is looking at this 136121120 and it's looking for the unique number 21067. So 21067, that's Sophos. Uh, 14988, that's my Mikrotik. Um, now, some are a little bit different, like Synology and QNAP. The SNMP libraries on those, the MIBs are not the best, but they can still be, they're still workable. Um, for instance, QNAP puts their model number, uh, or it puts a, a very, oh, it puts a QNAP systems incorporated or something deep, 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 deep down in an SNMP OID value, which I can assure you absolutely only exists in that not very pretty structure that QNAP have, but it works. Um, I will absolutely share this um, at the end of the call. Um, I don't think anybody actually has their hands on this. Maybe one or two people do. Um, uh, I've comment. If you want to share it, um, I got a spot we can put it. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Oh, this comes with an absolute warning right now. This will, so this piece is commented out, so it's not going to drop and recreate the table, but it is going to truncate them. So if you do have some legitimate detection templates that are working for you, then please do not run this because that will literally wipe it back to only getting manufacturers to which at that point you can then add your models as you go. So please do be aware of that. Um, so uh, that absolutely screams the, this is not official. This is my own time. I'm wearing my MSP, my MSP hat right now. Do not run this on a system where you have functional detection templates. All right. Um, so remove the truncate line. No, you can't do that because they're actually hard coded to a degree. Um, so I would probably just run it as is really. I think Kyle Elliot asked that question. So, but anyway, um, I will definitely share this, but this does come with a big fat red warning notice. If you do have a functional detection template tree, please do not run this. And then call support and tell me that all, tell us all the stuff's broke. But anyway, moving on. So um, next thing I want to do is I want to create a monitor. I know we spent a lot of time on detection templates, but that seems to be kind of where everything, you know, everything spawns from the detection template, um, especially when it comes to groups. And that bit I can cover fairly quickly. So um, I'm going to take. Think you can cover it quickly. Is it all right if I interrupt for just a minute? And, Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to take, take a take drink. Control. I'll mute sure. myself this time. Uh, so, so what, let's see, where was it at? Um, I just wanted to comment on this. Uh, I myself would probably have added in a level below this, uh, say access point. Uh, I did a quick search. I didn't know the Microtech product line, but uh, they've got uh, CRS125 is a series of switch. Uh, there's a 326, uh, whatever. There's a whole bunch of different ones that are all like CRS and then something. These are all switches. Uh, the This access point, RBCAP2N, I would just guess maybe there's other Microtechs that are RBC AP or AP three or something. I don't know. So uh, what you could do is get to the detection template. Uh, you can make it a little, a uh, little less specific. And so what I mean, let's go back to the switch one. 
So the switch hey, uh, one. Darren? Yeah. Um, I just want to say, I don't mind, <laughs> just for the sake of my next steps, um, I don't mind you changing the models. Um, please don't change the manufacturer level, please. Uh, so that one. Oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, no, let me show you what I was talking about. All right. um, so it, I'm not talking about like a generic, but like uh, say all Microtik switches, let's say that they all follow the format of CRS uh, and then some uh, – but let's just say that all Microtech switches start with CRS. We can use the correct key. We can do a, uh, a pattern like that as our regex. So we know that we've already figured out it's a Microtech, right? We've gotten through that level. So now if I have a device that instead of calling it this specifically, I did Microtech CRS series switch. I could do a pattern like this. And then below that, I could actually call out a specific model. Uh, all you would do is not specify the model. You know, we know it's a switch. We know it's a micro tick, uh, but not call out a specific model. Then add the model one level down. The benefit for that is that if you get another micro tick in your environment, maybe not that exact model, at least you can get it to the micro tick category and the switch category. And then if you actually have the individual model defined, you know, bring it all the way down. Um, but if you always match exactly, uh, then you're only ever going to detect devices that you've already manually added. You know, I like to uh, prepare for things in the future, you know, so like all future Microtik switches, I'd like to at least know that they're switches. So that's going to be up to the individual manufacturer. This is where kind of knowing the product line comes into play. Uh, if like say access points and switches both use that same descriptor, well, that's not going to work. But if the manufacturer has a consistent naming, I'll mention like Sonic wall has NSA and TZ series, anything with the description of TZ something is going to be a Sonic wall firewall. Uh, you know, so, and then I could have individual specific models below that. So I won't change this. I just wanted to, to uh, kind of mention slash advocate, maybe doing a less specific expression uh, to get the category and then do your specific device below that. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Actually. Uh, yep. All of the above. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> um. Okay, so let's say, all right, so we've got the detection templates. Uh, we figure we've got those pretty, you know, down pretty well now. Obviously, all devices, you pass a test for SNMP. I've, det I've detected that you are a Mikrotik based on a rule, and I've detected that you are this switch, and you are this wireless access point. And again, to Darren's point, you can cut this up however you like. Um, but the, tr the key is that you have to, you have to basically pass the rule to get down that branch. If you don't have a key to get in the door, then you're not getting in. So think of it like that. Um, okay, so uh, SNMP remote monitors. These can be done, and they can be done pretty easily too. Now that we have the detection template in place as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a screen that we're all familiar with, which is actually, let's just stay on this one for one moment. So we'll go to monitors, and these are my remote monitors. Just forget about the probe for a moment. These are just my remote monitors on this agent uh, eventually. Anytime now. OK. So I'm looking for a service. And if it stops, restart it. We all know that. And then you, you're all familiar with the concept of creating the monitor on the agent. And then once you're happy with that monitor, you send it to a group. And then you can send it wherever you like. Typically, you'd put it in your service plan group or your you know, uh, exchange group, You know, if anybody even has exchange out there anymore. Um, so again, we're all familiar with remote monitors on agents. So what we're going to do is taking that principle, we're going to apply that to remote device monitors. Um, so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go to my wireless access point. Now, I'm going to go to my switch. Where is it? Here it is. Kyle says he's got a few exchange systems out there. Not me. I mean, just want to clarify, that is not me. No, not you, Kyle. Another Kyle. Kyle's will Kyle take over Elliot. Slack. Fake Kyle. Hmm. We'll call him Fake Kyle. No, he's not. I've actually met. You know what? I've actually met Kyle Elliott. I've not met you yet. Uh, so. yeah, yeah, we have. Oh yes, we years ago. My God. Yeah, it's been a while, but that that hurts. It has. Ouch. <laughs> Come on. Oh. All right. All right, so we want to create a remote monitor for this network switch. Now, one thing I will say is this. If you are constantly doing walks, um, you can just hit refresh and get the latest data, but all you're doing there is pulling from that database table that I told you about earlier on. But remember, these are live stats when you pull them, not just now. I just refresh this. So let's just say that one is you know, now a three, or it's a five, or whatever. Um, you would always want the more up to you know more up to date version if you're constantly walking devices i have a little tip for you um i would go to your probe walk results table oops and literally just truncate it just get rid of everything that's in there so you know that it you know it's not like a uh, tainting data that you see and whatnot so now you can walk again and we'll get a good healthy batch this time. Let's see if we can find something pretty, oh, well, let's just go for 500. And send, okay. Little uh, SNMP background maybe. When you do a walk, especially there, you see they're starting OID. Uh, it's actually up to the device to indicate what the next OID is. And so you'll see sometimes that manufacturers have really lousy SNMP implementation. And so it won't walk specific branches. I think that's what was being described earlier when it was said that it wouldn't walk the 13614, the private enterprises MIB. It won't walk it if the vendor doesn't properly implement it so that it will go down that branch. If you tell it that you want to start at that OID, it should walk it as long as the uh, implementation of SNMP on that device works correctly. It's not a problem with the probe walking. It's a problem with the device not hinting correctly. Right. Um, you, we mentioned, let's see if we can, uh, did I go far enough for this one, three? I didn't. No. Okay. So here we go. I've got multiple uh, values now to choose from here. Hey Martin, why don't you kick a scan with no limit and then just close it, let it go in the background. Uh, that way, maybe later uh, we'll have some more data. Well, I was actually going to do just, uh, I was kind of thinking about this earlier on, and uh, off the top of my head, um, one sec, I can't, so I have a few OIDs wrote out, um, I believe, in my on my desktop. Did I put them? No. No. Uh, no, where did it go? I had a few wrote out, I thought. If I can guess where you're going. Yeah, there we go. You're looking for something to uh, monitor yes. about. <laughs> Correct. So CPU, now, I obviously don't have much network traffic going on. Um, so my memory, my CPU doesn't really, doesn't really move. So what I was thinking for like a very simple remote monitor test, just to show you how to implement one, um, would actually be this string. So this is my, uh, well, it's basically the contact on the device itself. So let's just say I want to monitor for whenever that changes. Now this could be a number two to indicate the device is okay, or the RAID configuration, or the RAID health, or whatever the stat is. If it's a two, it's good. But if it's a three or a four, that's bad, and I want to know about it. So let's just, you know, We'll, we'll go for that. So all you do here is you right-click that OID that you want to monitor and click Create Monitor. So we'll create the monitor. 
We'll go to configuration. And this is a UI bug. It does say web-based enterprise management. But if you swap it out for SNMP OID, there's your information. Now, in the database, um, there are, and this is via the solution packs, which I've just not done a good job of clearing them all out. There are actually some preloaded checks already in the database. Um, I'll be honest with you right now, I have not played with these, um, so mileage will vary. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone right now. I just want to focus on what we're doing. Um, I also want to show you all a bit of a tip as well that I only picked up the other day. So let's say you're creating a monitor and you don't know the OID, but you've got all your MIBs loaded and you know it's a Micritic MIB. So you want to look up the OID, but this is absolutely just madness. I mean, you can't really look what you're looking for. You can't find what you're looking for. So here's a little tip. Click on Labels and select Module. This will take a, a little minute to refresh, but once it does, it's actually pretty useful. Uh, bear me one, bear that a minute. I really want to show you this. No, it's fine. I mean, we've all experienced this with uh, working in Automate. You know, the, oh, there, we're about. Yeah. So now that I have the module uh, selected, I'm like, right, I know it's a Micritic MIB. So, or it's in the Micritic, so I'm going to find. Oh, there they are. Great. So now I'm kind of in the ballpark where I need to be. Perfect. 14988. That is the enterprise number. And in most cases, the manufacturer will put all of their different things under that number. So again, thinking of the registry um, example that I gave in the PowerPoint, which seems like a while ago now. But like, for instance, you know, this is the wireless group. This is a neighbor group. And you've got all these different, you know, Micritic specific values that you can absolutely look for. So you've got firmware version, serial number, um, firmware upgrade version. That is a really good one, especially if it gives you the firmware version that it's on and gives you a firmware version that's available. So you can always run a check. You can't run a check against two OIDs. You can't say if this is less than this. You, you can't do that. But what you could do is you could, um, I don't know, have an EDF somewhere. That's getting a little bit wild and out there right now. But, you know, just giving you some ideas here, what you can really do with SNMP remote monitors. So I used the registry value, um, sorry, the registry editor earlier as like an example because it's like, 1.3.6, 141, 14988, 1174. Well, let's just say the upgrade version is 6.45. Okay, great. Um, I want to know when the upgrade version is 6.46 or whatever, you know, or the next version. Um, so that's really useful. But um, yeah, anyway, rabbit hole, I'm sorry. Select module, and then you can search for the MIB, and that will help you out a little bit. Obviously, there are a lot of free MIB walk tools out there. I think iReasoning have one. Um, that's actually pretty solid. Uh, it's free. There is an enterprise and a professional version too. But uh, yeah, you can, you can do that here. Anyway, back to this. We right-clicked the value that we wanted to find, and we chose Create Monitor. So now we're going to create a remote monitor, which is going to look for this value, and it's going to make sure that this is the actual result. Now, just like you would do a remote monitor, you can run a test just to make sure that, yep, is that the value right now? So we'll give that a minute. I don't think the probe's in fast talk anymore, so it might take another minute. Oh, there we go. So, yep, that is the value. The remote monitor is a success. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the interval here just to 60 seconds just to you know, expedite it a little bit for the sake of the demo. Um, and then the rest of them, I, I, I can just leave alone. Tell you what, we'll do a create ticket. Why don't we do that? Create ticket, alert style once. Um, I'll leave all that just for the sake of the demo. Okay. 
contact name change on that. Hang on a second. Micritic contact name change. We'll just do that and then we'll hit save. So um, I'm going to close this now. And then I'm going to go to my control agent, my probe. And if I refresh this, we should see a new remote monitor. Here it is. So here is my remote monitor running on the uh, agent. That is my probe. When I refresh, it's still installing and it's installed. Nope, there it is. It jumps around. So there's the information. There is my name, current state duration, half a minute, interval, and when I check every minute, and I'm alert when it fails. Now, this next piece is probably the best part, especially because we've got the detection templates done. So uh, my phone's dinging. Someone's probably saying probe in the channel, so I'm going to... Uh, I wasn't. No, that was me. Oh, it was you? Yeah, that oh. was totally me. Okay. Um, yes. Um, we'll take a short break if you want to do that. Uh, no, you continue. Um, finish this up and then we'll take a break. Well, I'm about to get into uh, the group-based monitors. So uh, I think now's a good time just to stop for, say, five minutes. Yep. Everybody, you know, get up, restroom break, grab another beer, whatever it is, and... Uh, should we say nine? Well, what time is it? Nine thirty-six. Uh, yeah, we'll, five we'll, minutes. We'll take a quick break, um, and uh, when we come back, uh, hopefully the audio will not break again, and uh, we should be good. Um, see you in five. Okay. All right. Uh, we are back, um, and we're gonna <laughs> kick off where we left off uh, with Martin's fancy car and uh, <laughs> groups. Okay. All right, then. So uh, before we uh, took a break there, uh, the last thing that we did, uh, let's go back to, okay, we did the probe template management and we did the command console. Let's go back to the probe. Okay, so we created a remote monitor. Uh, we did that by right uh, going to the device, SNMP Explore tab, we did a walk and we right click the OID that we wanted to look for. Again, I'm just using contact name because this is obviously something I can change very easily and on demand for the sake of the demo. Um, but you would obviously want to be looking for an OID that represents something to do with failed or you know success in terms of health and raid and all that good stuff, like something legitimate. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we need to send this to a group and this is just like how you would do it for your service monitors you know like when you uh, first were taught lab tech back in the day or even automate now if you want to look for a service uh you want to create a group you want to create your search and then you join the group by that limit to search and then you get your agents and then on that group you have a monitor applied and everybody gets it so we're all familiar with that i'm going to I'm going to assume that uh, just for the purposes of this demo. Um, that's all covered under the 101 training. So, but, so it's the same applies, but this is just a different kind of monitor. So how do we do that? Well, it's automate. There are many ways to do many things, but this is how I propose uh, we do them. Um, and you can do whatever you like. This is just a suggestion. Again, not official documentation here. It's just how I go about it. So first off, I create a group. I call it network devices, and I don't have any search going on here. It's a monitoring group. It can be whatever you like. And we'll just stick to monitoring just for the purposes of its subgroups or child groups. Uh, it's a grayed out master, uh, which means that nothing will be stolen from it, and uh, everything will live there. Um, now, there is obviously nothing in this group because there is no search. However, I do have uh, a child group here. This is agents network probes. Just for the sake of convenience, 
Typically, if I'm going to be under this folder, I'm going to want to get quick access to my probes. So I might as well create a folder, call it agents. So it goes right up to the top of the list, or you can even call it underscore network probes if you want to, because we know the underscore puts it to the top of the group. I join this with the typical search that we're used to, and then we have my probes. We well, have your probes. I don't have any remote monitors on these on the group. I don't need them on the group. And essentially, they're there just for the sake of convenience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this just to kind of keep it consistent with the rest of the group naming. That will absolutely stay at the top of the group. And now what I want to do is I want to create another group under network devices. And I'm going to call this managed devices. Now, I'm going to save this for now because, obviously, I want to join this with a search. But how do we do this? So I'm going to show you. So here's the group. We call it Manage Devices. If you want to, you can create another one called All Devices as well. I'll just basically put everything, well, not everything, all network devices in this group. Uh, what am I doing? I want to create a new group. While you're typing all that out, um, mm -hmm. I'd just like to point out that uh, Jay Slaggle is wrong officially on the stream because he's now uh, popped his head back in. Oh, Jay Slaggle. Yeah, what was his, uh, was it now, uh, Jay, was it Jason? Yes, Jason Slaggle. Yeah, um, he didn't know that I was actually, uh, oh, he he's not on yet. Okay, I'll wait for him to come on. This is actually uh, pretty cool because he's past the, <laughs> this is actually mm. quite ironic timing, isn't it? Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. All right, what are we doing here? What, what happened? All right. Uh, Kyle Elliott, uh, he is two hours late, but uh, he's joined at the perfect time because he did tell me. Protection templates. Uh, what was it? Without collection are pointless or like near useless so this is a perfect section for him i'm gonna this is where the burn comes <clears throat> so what we'll do is we have the groups all devices managed devices now what do i mean by managed devices this is snmp devices aka our responded devices so we need to create a search for these to obviously auto join these groups so let's go do that We'll go to automation, view searches. All right, so I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it network devices. No, I'm not. I'm going to call it something random. Network devices, there we go. And then doo, 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 doo. I'm going to create a search. Now, I'm searching for network devices. I'm going to add network device, general, oh no, device library type. So I'm going to create two searches, one for all of my devices. So these are my discovered devices. I should get about 120, 121, that's right. We're gonna call this all devices and save. Uh, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to responded devices and I'm gonna call this responded. Devices, do another search. I'm going to save this. I'm going to create a new search, yes. And then for my Micratic, I'm then going to go down one more, do a search. I should find my two. There they are. And then, oops, 
a manufacturer. Oops, micro tick. Save. Yep. Okay. Okay, I saw a comment there from uh, our lovely, gorgeous uh, Gavin Stone. This workflow angers me. I have so much time flicking between these things. I assume you mean the fact that you have to go to like automation searches and browse groups and that sort of stuff. We have Is all that right? these tabs and not enough. Uh, we have all these tabs and they're all spread out in different okay. windows. I was I I didn't think he meant the way that I was applying what I am doing. I think it's just more so the UI that he has the issue with. Uh, just making sure, because if not, then I would only be buying him 13 drinks uh, next week, not 14 that we earlier agreed on. Um, so, well, he probably owes you a few. Oh, he'll be... Yeah, Gav's going to be... I don't oh expect Gav anyway. to be able to walk for any part of the conference next week. No, I think we'll... Uh, I think all of us as a community should pull together and uh, take chairs, pushing his wheelchair... All right, back on, be... back on subject. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got my network probes here, and I created two groups, all devices, managed devices. So I go to all devices, and I want to limit this to a network device search, all devices. I mean, granted, not really much of a limit. And this group is not necessary, just, just so you know. Um, this group is not necessary. It's just, again, for the sake of convenience, here are all my probes. Here are all my devices. Okay, now I'm going to do something with these devices. Now, let's go to manage devices. Open this. And responded devices. Manage, responded, same thing. So I'll click save. And actually, uh, one thing I didn't do on the other group uh, do, 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 do. Actually, I have to do it in this order. I actually did forget that a moment ago. Uh, we can preview this and uh, auto join now. Okay, cancel, and we'll do the same here as well. Preview. There are my 21, right? Whatever it was. Yep. Auto join now. Okay, cancel. And we'll do a reload system cache. May have done by now. All devices. Again, I don't really need to create this all devices group. It's just for the sake of having them here. Convenient, I guess, right? Uh, and then manage devices. So these are all my devices that I'm chatting with SNMP. So if I go to this manage devices group, I can go to network devices and monitors. Now, remember the best practice when creating a remote monitor on an agent first, once it's good, then you send it to a group. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to take my uh, remote monitor from my probe and send it to that group. I went to network probe, didn't I? Yeah, that's muscle memory. All right. Okay, Microtech, send to group. So uh, Jason Slagle, uh, I'm not sure if he's joined yet, but uh, if he has, this is, uh, this is how they do prove to be very useful. But this is all driven from the detection template. Remember that. So manage devices, click send. Now, what I'll do is I will refresh my, no, nope, that's all devices. The guilty party is watching. Oh, he is. Hello, Jason. 
refresh. Now, before this gets a chance to install, I'm going to limit this to my Micratix. And I'm going to update that real quick. So what I can do here, because I have all of my managed devices in one group, I can add all of my network device remote monitors to this group and use the limit to Oh, hang on, refresh. Okay. So what I can do is I can add all of my network device remote monitors into this group based on the limit to. So now I can have like, you know, manufacturer Cisco. These are my Cisco ones. These are my Dell ones. These are my whatever, whatever you really want. But you don't need to create a group for every device library you just create the one group and limit to. Um, just to kind of put it into a kind of perspective, um, what I do with my service plans, going a little off tangent here, but it's just to help explain. I got my managed services plan. I go to my computers and remote monitors. All of my service remote monitors are here. And they're limited to where that service exists. So now if I happen to pick up somebody with Plex, let's just say, and we can see I've got a few uh, NZB stuff here. We'll just <clears throat> scroll up. So if I have anybody else like with Grafana, doesn't or exist, AD, doesn't exist, or like Grafana or AD or APC UPS service, it doesn't matter if they are in my if their location is using my service plan. They're gonna get that remote monitor if that service exists. So going back to the network device. That's the wrong screen. Do -do -do. There. So now, if this name check occurs, or this change occurs on any of my Micratix, I should get an alert. And we're going to put that to the test here now. So let's see if we can uh, do it live, so to speak. So I created this monitor using my switch, but I'm going to change the contact name on my wireless access point instead. So let me go back to manage devices. Um, Kyle Elliott, uh, the answer is yes, recently. Um, so network devices, and thank you. Uh, so if I go network devices, monitors. All right, monitors installed. When will they install? I think it takes a little while. Um, I'm trying to remember how to force that now. Update config sounds about right. Actually, I wonder if it's because of the group join. No, they're in the group. So remote monitors are triggered by a background loop. Um, I it runs fairly frequently, um, every minute or two, but there is a limit to the number of devices. You shouldn't be anywhere near it, but uh, the bottom line is I'm really sure there's no way to force it. And anything you try to do to force it isn't really going to help. You just got to wait for it. Yeah. All remote monitors, you just got to wait for the system to decide, oh, I need to push it here. Mm. Is there two? Yeah. We'll give that, I mean, because I know that we've got them in the searches. I know that they're in that group. Um, I'll tell you what, let's just go. Let's just go back now. I've done the reload system cache. Did I actually send the update config? I can't remember. I'll tell you what. Well, that's not going to help the monitors build. No. So yeah, while we wait for that, let me uh, log into my wireless access point. some uh, wind in your near vicinity. 
that might be my fan behind me as well. Uh, unless you are, your fan is right up next to it, um, mm-hmm. blowing into the microphone. Uh, I do not think it is you. Well, it's not changed its position all night, so I should be fine. Uh, one sec. I've been generally muting other than when I speak. If you're hearing a noise beyond when I'm talking. Interesting. Maybe it's fake Darren breathing. Maybe. Mm. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So, like, in a blink of an eye, there we go. We have the monitors installed, just as we expected. Um, now, typically on the remote monitor, where it's just an agent monitor on a computer, you can double-click this now, and you'll see the list of, you know, however many monitors that is. But what this is telling us is obviously, all right, this monitor is installed on two devices, but if we then go to the probe machine... Let's open this up, go to monitors. We have this one here for the device, and this one is coming from the group. We can see that the source is the group. So I can now go to this one and delete it. So I'll say yes. Okay, so that was created from the... Oh, and there you go. You can also... If my switch had an actual name, or it picked up a name, I should say, you'll see here that you know this would say MK Home Lab Switch because that's what I named it. Um, however, here is the wireless access point, same monitor. So what we'll do is we'll test this. Uh, this is my wireless access point. Uh, it is at 251, 1083, 251. Apologies if the resolution is super small on this. Uh, I can assure you that my name in full is in this contact info. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove a few characters. In fact, you know what? Let's say Kyle came in and changed the contact information from um, from me to him. And so the name is Kyle Spooner, location, I don't know. Click apply, and we click OK. Uh I have confirmed hacked into all of your systems and altered all of your contact information to be me. I can I can see that. That was very impressive of you. I didn't even notice how you did that. Uh, with elite hacks and regular expressions. I bet it was fake, Darren. You know what? Ban him. I'll, it was hey, fake, on. Darren. Come it on. was fake, Darren. It hurts. In your mind. Okay. Fake Darren is now the contact on my wireless access point, and my location has changed. Really not too concerned about the location, but it is the contact info. Again, I'm only using this OID value as a demo to show you, because that's obviously a a value that I can control fairly easily. Um, I don't have much traffic in my home network, so obviously it's not going to do anything for me there. So now uh, this thing is testing uh, every minute. So what we can do here is open this up. And I'm hoping we can run a test on this. And it will, I'm going to go to probe commands. I swear to God, if this doesn't work. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Well, it wouldn't, but you know what I mean. All right. So let's go to this monitor. Test. So we're looking for if it looks like this, which it obviously it doesn't because we changed it. Run a test. Moment of truth, guys. Installing result. Let's see. Installing result. Hmm. Well, that's not a fail and it's not a success either. I wonder if I have to reinstall the monitor. Hmm. 
I mean, you've got two, right? You've got the one that you created plus the group based one. All right, there's the group one. Yep. So this installed at 10.02, so that was a few moments ago. Current next schedule check in 12 seconds. Okay, I am not sure why it's giving me the, uh, huh, interesting. Installing a result. Is there more? So uh, when you do a, uh, a test of a monitor like this, it works through a remote command. Right. Uh, so you can look at the command status on the probe and and see what it is sending. I'm wondering if it's this V2, if we miss this. Let me do that. Agent Pro, oh, I knew that. Hang on. You tested the other one though, uh, and it did test successfully. Yeah. Let me uh, take that out. Let me double check that that oid value is right as well. I mean, I'm pretty certain it is. Uh, you know, that probably is it. Yeah. That'll probably fix it. Yep, 1140. Now, this is on the switch, of course. So let me go to the uh, wireless access point. Uh, it should definitely be the same. Uh, I'll, I haven't run across this real recently, um, but I haven't tested that kind of monitor. Anyways, uh, when you do test monitor, uh, at least at some points in the past, the way automate would send the command is slightly different than the way that it sends the command to actually install the monitor. Uh, and you can see that when you look at the remote commands. Now, if you look at the commands tab on that agent, when you do a test, the parameters that it sends are are just different. And I bet you that it was actually putting in the parentheses and the use probe value, that whole string literally, as the OID, mm. which would fail. So yeah, there is the uh, OID. It's picked up the fact that it is a new name now. And I changed the location as well. So that is 1140. So let's go back to the group monitor. Uh, do, 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 do. There. I think I did update it. I'll refresh this. The, I don't think it took that update. Let's have a, let's reopen the group. Because uh, as I recall, after you press update, it should change, you know, change like that. It should go back to add. There we go. It's not in there now. So. Okay. It'll have to update them. Why don't we take a look at the remote commands and see if the monitor, uh, how it looks. And also we can see what happened when you tested it. I bet it was sending that a bad OID. Gotcha. Well, this got fun really quickly. <laughs> yeah, there. So, those, yeah, those are the tests. Yep. And wow, so, interesting. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, now, how did that one work? Well, that was um, just, this was an actual test of the monitor that we put on the switch. <laughs> so it looks like it doubled the, uh, so you saved probe settings. It looks like it doubled that on this one where it failed. And I then removed it from the monitor itself because it automatically put it in and I didn't remove it. So let's see if I go back to that monitor now. And it still left the, uh, we need to update the monitors on that group. It's still not updated it to the new monitors. I'll tell you what, that's uh, the one. Well, th that happens in the background. You just have to wait for that. Yeah. Uh, but you can override it directly in a test. Uh, you're, you're wanting to see the live alert. Ooh, one second. No, yeah. we, can, we can still uh, test it and see. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, do we have any questions, um, Kyle? Any questions come in recently? Uh, no. Gavin's been fielding them pretty handily. Um, Jason is uh, making fun of uh, how long this is taking. Um, That's fine. <laughs> uh, Go ahead and test it just like that. Now that the object identifier is fixed, I believe you'll be good. There we go. There we are. So I'll save that. Hey, I thought we weren't going to find bugs. Yeah, I didn't think we would either. Someone tried to bet me um, a dollar to yeah. uh, if if that Darren would find a bug. Um, uh, I decided to um, not take that bet. Yeah. <laughs> so I think then what what's happening is that when it adds it to the group. It's putting in, it's like prepending something to the object identifier. That must be what it is. I'm, I will obviously take a look at that a lot closer tomorrow. But um, essentially, the detection templates, that's still good, the way that that works. And the fact that you can create a remote monitor uh, by walking a device and right-clicking on the value of the walk. And then when you create that monitor, it goes to the probe agent and you can send it to a group of devices that are auto joined by a device library search. Um, I just want to bring up that search real quick again while that monitor installs on second. Uh, where is it? We'll go for Mikrotik. And all device library searches are the same. Obviously, you just change the actual library that you're looking for. Uh, so the way that I did that was through uh, searching for network device, device library type equals, and then this is where you would have your list of manufacturers. And that goes back to that large SQL query as well that I mentioned. Once you, If you do run that, um, again, don't run it in your system if you've already got working templates. Um, but this is where it would fill it with all those different manufacturers so by the way of using searches in groups, you can you know, have a group full of all of your managed devices and then add all your remote monitors to that group limited to the device uh, manufacturer. So oh, uh, no, no. Let's go back to browse.
go to control. That should have installed by now. And there we go. It failed. So that should have created a ticket for me now. Uh, let's have a look at this. There we go. Mikrotik contact name change ticket. It's using the probe save setting. So that would be the SNMP community string. And then it's hitting that particular OID. And then here it's giving you, and obviously you can change. One thing that I didn't do in this uh, demo was like change the, re change the uh, message. Um, but you can do that as well via use of variables. Um, but here you can see the, the test for the contact name change failed. Um, it was at this OID and the result was fake Darren. Um, so this is where obviously in a real world scenario, it would be the result equals three. And then obviously if three means a fail, then obviously you get the ticket and you could obviously perform some action on that then. Um, but that is essentially, um, minus that. Yes. Tiny bug, which will get fixed. Um, it's this use save probe settings. It appeared that it put it in twice. Uh, so just to remove one of those, which is, I'll be honest, it is a tad frustrating. I think the demo went really, really well tonight uh, up until that final piece. Although I think the demo in general has gone very, very well. Uh, I just, I'd get bit once, so that's fine. Oh, my bad. No, you're fine. So yeah, um, that is essentially how you do that. Uh, when you do create your monitor, be careful that it doesn't append or prepend, I should say, that text there at the start of the OID, and then uh, you should be good. And uh, yeah, that that was uh, pretty much the bulk of what I had to show. Um, there was one other thing um, that Gavin mentioned to me. Um, there is... Uh, there is a known issue right now, which I don't mind getting into because this is going to help you out massively um, as you go through potentially redoing your detection template uh, tree. Um, and I'm going to bring up the slide for this because it's a lot to explain. So I'm going oh, to bring up the slide. You can all take a screenshot of it if you want. Um, or Kyle, if you want to take a screenshot and throw it into Slack, that's fine. Um, it's essentially this. Um, it's a lot of information, um, but from time to time, when you are creating a bunch of detection templates and then, you know, you've removed a bunch, you've added a bunch or whatnot, it can sometimes, um, not delete what, uh, what you deleted out of the probe template manager from the registry. This is a known issue. I have a bug on this. Um, and it is going to get resolved. Um, but until that point, um, these are some steps that you can do just to make sure that the detection templates that you see in the probe template manager are in fact exactly what the probe agent has in its registry. So just want to throw that out there. Um, that may or may not help out a lot. You see, We've found at times where like people are putting in the correct det detection templates and they work just fine, but maybe that one that you deleted a few weeks ago or even just earlier that day, for whatever reason, the registry key didn't get removed. So, and because that other, red, uh, that other detection rule is so vague, but it's vague enough to match something else, that's kind of where it falls down. So uh, I definitely wanted to bring that up. Thank you for um, uh, bringing that up uh, to my attention earlier on, Gavin. Uh, I'm glad that I could mention that. So I'll swing over screens again. So yeah, um, remote monitoring of network device information can be done through Automate. Uh, granted, it's... Uh, Probably not the easiest process out there. Uh, I'll admit that, but it is doable uh, right now in its current form. Um, but the the key with everything of this is definitely the uh, detection tree. Um, so again, discovered device is everything. Responded device, devices that replied with SNMP, 
and then we break it out into the different manufacturers and then the models and then it's on the model where you actually define the device type as opposed to doing it the other way where the tree right now is by type then manufacturer so we then take these detection templates oh sorry device library we then create a search using those which we can then use to auto join groups. And then we can further use those to limit remote monitors to the respective manufacturer. So, and that is well, all I got to say about that for right now. So, are there, that pretty much concludes, that kind of ends my demo. Um, I know I said I wanted to get into collection templates. Um, just being respectful of everybody's time, though, this evening. Um, that, would, that would probably blow up to another 30 or 45 minutes. Um, so we can definitely tackle that another evening on another GeekCast, maybe. Um, but that is, uh, that's, uh, that's the lot for this evening. So uh, I'm going to hand it back over to you, Kyle. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll through the Twitch chat for a little bit. Oh, and good. The, that's, uh, there's some good reading in there. Um, Gavin, copy and paste the entire section and put it somewhere important we can keep. Um, we There will not be a stream next week yep. as we will be all at the conference. Um, to you're, those, you're really muffled on your microphone. I'm yeah, sorry. It's fine. Um, we are going to uh, the Automation Nation, IT Nation Explorer Conference 2019. Um, the entire admin staff will be there. Um, so if you want to thank someone, buy someone a beer, hang out, have fun, what have you, um, we'll all be there. We'll all be present. Um, most of us will be, res uh, most of us will be arriving. Um, <laughs> most of us will be arriving, uh, Wednesday, um, if not a little earlier. Um, so we'll all be present and accounted for. Um, if, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask um, before we uh, jump off. Um, this ran a little bit longer than we wanted it to, uh, but I think we got some good information. Uh, Martin did an amazing job. Um, so um, he did... Uh, oh, there's a question in Twitch chat. Martin, if you want to grab that. Oh, yeah. Um, are, there, are there any plans changes? Okay, so the question is by Hey Mip. Um, are there any plans for adding changes like having a SQL script to a solution center update? There are a lot of network device solutions that all of this makes look pretty bad. Uh, even the group structure for those solutions. Any chance of a like remove legacy network solution and update to current type of deal? So, as for the solution center, and again, I'm just going to bring up this slide. Uh, one second, this one. So this is not official documentation um, or official word from me here, but um, yes. So the current detection templates and the network device solution packs, um, there are, we are having internal discussions on that and how we are going to handle these going forward. Or because, all right, Every vendor out there has an array of hardware. We don't have all the hardware, but you guys, you know, the thousands of partners that um, ConnectWise have, you do have those devices. So it's a case of how can we do this in a way where maybe we can open up the possibility of sharing or com collaborating, that's the best word, collaborating on a pool of these. So that way, let's say Kyle goes out and buys like a ton of Cisco switches and he creates a bunch of them. Well, then so does Gavin, and then he bun he creates a bunch of them. And it's just a lot of duplicated effort over something that's really fairly simple, although everything's simple when you know how. So maybe it's something that we, as a community, and I include myself in that, maybe we can, uh, and I don't mind kind of starting this, we can put something out there to where, all right, we obviously can't share them in terms of SQL, but maybe even if it's just like a text format or like insert statements, 
I don't want to throw around a bunch of insert statements just because that's that could be a bad thing. But if we kind of lay out a template of, say, for instance, let's say I wanted to create um, a template. Oh, no, I've just created this template of a Mikrotik. Okay, so I would build a little 10-line document with, or like a form, which would say, right, the device type is Mikrotik. The detection template is titled this, 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 basically just this in a text format. And then you can then go away, take that, and copy-paste it into your probe template manager, something like that. I mean, it, it doesn't sound incredibly automated, pardon the pun, but it's at least a start. Um, maybe as, a, you know, see how popular it gets, and then maybe we try to do something a little bit more advanced. But, uh, for a yeah, quick no, that term. would, if, if we could have something like that, that we could just basically, or maybe we, we could store our own repository of um, copy-pasted right. items. Um I, I think that might be a good win. Um, if we did that in a GitHub-like environment, um, we would obviously have to keep the folder structure as is. Um, myself and the admins would be the, uh, what do you call that? The Administrators? Ad, yeah. <laughs> the, administra the administrators of that uh, repo. And then people can basically just create PRs. Yeah. Um, right? So and then as, so long as we keep them structured... I posted, so that way, uh, we have, we now have a public repo. Um, I'll post it again. Um, this is our GitHub public repo. Um, we're going to put all kinds of content in here that, uh, we have that doesn't necessarily fit somewhere in the forums or anything like that. Um, for instance, uh, stuff we run here on the geek cast, we can easily put up on, uh, Yes, it's called public. It's called public repo, so people know it's public repo because we have private repos. Stop being mean to me. So um, what we can what we can do then, um, and I don't mind starting this off. I can build a form for how I created this Mikrotik, and then as and when people want to create one for Cisco or Juniper or whoever SonicWall, I don't you know whatever. Um, so long as we follow the same folder structure format, whatever it is, um, I think that would set. Set us all for, set us all up for success, and then that way, if we've got a folder structure in GitHub, then we're going to assume that you're all setting up these folder structures the same in your app in the application. And I think that might be the uh, quickest way to uh, accomplish that. But it would have to be community driven because you guys have all the uh, the uh, devices. Um, we could possibly do a web form. Um... We could look at doing that. Uh, like submit your uh, submit your detection template? Uh, well, you could put in the information, and then it would build the form for you. Mm, yeah. We, um, who asked the initial question? Uh, uh, that hey, would be Dave M. Um, nope. Dave M. asked the question about uh, the web form. Okay. No, the, the originator of the question, uh, hey, Mip. Um, yes. that's a That is a great question and absolutely something that we uh, – yeah. That's that's a good one. We just have to be careful about how we go about so, it. So uh, I do want to point this out. Yes, Gavin, having this within Automate and having all kinds of fancy stuff in Automate that allows us to share and collaborate would be amazing. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So we're, uh, and of course, you already know this. Um, and uh, it's it's very important to point out that this would be community so if you do not set it up the way the community has it set up it could break or disable something in your system uh, uh, with detection templates so if you don't run the exact same format and formula it could not properly detect or it may end up crippling your detection templates altogether and yeah. again you know uh, usual disclaimers apply yep. you know it is community and all that good stuff and uh, I think that would be a very quick uh, the the quickest way to get this kind of going, to be quite honest with you. Um, oh, I'll ask, and I haven't looked, but uh, someone should see, is there an enhancement request already open for the ability to share detection templates? And if there is not, that would probably be a very good thing to have somebody create. Yeah. Absolutely. And every single person that you know to upvote. 
uh, and according, and don't forget that, uh, everyone who has a, I believe it's everyone who has a, a, a university account can upvote enhancement request, correct? I believe so. So that means everyone in your entire company can upvote enhancement requests. So now, depending on how well it goes for detection templates and uh, even collection templates, like as in, you know, as we get there, um, I mean, it doesn't just have to be limited to those items of the application either. Uh, so we could use this maybe as a platform to, you know, see how it goes. Cause I mean, I would say it is probably one of the uh, trickier areas of the program to put it politely. Uh, you do have to know SNMP a little bit. Uh, it, it's like anything really, you know, everything's easy once you know how, but sometimes a learning curve is, it is difficult. And that's kind of why I went through this geek cast tonight. That was the whole point of it. Cause I know a lot of people are struggling with this and, uh, you know, if I'm available, you know, in any capacity to assist with this, then I, I want to do that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, no, this is, this has been amazing. I've learned a lot. I know a lot of people have learned a lot. Um, it's, doing detection and you know doing snmp stuff inside of automate um is uh difficult and has been a laughing stock for quite some time um so with the recent updates and everything that have started to straighten some things out and you know since the last time i really had to deal with snmp um it's it's nice to see it work and work mostly flawlessly um yeah so yeah and, and it's good. And this is the kind of content we want to put out. This is the kind of stuff that the admin team and uh, we want to get together and, and output information that not everyone has. Um, now, anyone is welcome to join and host, co-host a geek cast. Um, we're community driven. So we're, the content is community driven. So if you feel that you want to pass on information specific to scripting or PowerShell or anything related to automate, manage, sell, um, control, we're willing to host those streams with you and get on a call and have a discussion and go over some training points and all kinds of good stuff. Um, we're not limited to just the admin staff. Um, so, I mean, if, feel free to reach out to myself, um, Gavin, any, anyone on the admin team, we can, we have a specific backroom channel that we discuss, um, geek cast stuff on we'll invite you into there and we'll have a discussion on what you want to do and how you want to do it um and uh if you're a vendor you know a vendor and they want to do one we can entertain that discussion as well um we have no issues um we had an amazing uh geek cast with kyle hansloven <clears throat> um a while back which was just outstanding um he runs huntress labs and uh he just went through an amazing repertoire of how people get into your systems and how they backdoor CMDs and oh, it's just great. It's on YouTube that, if you guys that, haven't watched it. That was phenomenal. That was insane. I, I'm not just I'm not just saying that. I mean, I was literally just blown away by that one. It was. I mean, he was like on. He was like working away from home or something. It was like on the road. Somewhere he was at a he, conference. He was at a conference. Yeah. It had. Uh, he was like he stepped away. And sat yeah. for two hours on our live stream and went through just the most amazing stuff I've ever seen. Um, yeah. And uh, yep. Hunter Slabs is great. Uh, we use it at our company. Um, tell Kyle that Kyle sent you. Um, um, I can't um, message into the Twitch channel just because I'm not signed in right now. Mm -hmm. But I just want to, I just want to thank everybody on there for joining. Um, I think I saw the numbers get up there. It's about 40 that were watching. So that's yeah. pretty good. That's a good number. And obviously this is recorded. So this will be uh, put out on the YouTube channel at some point. But yeah, good questions um, from everybody there. Um, I don't know if any... Um, I mean, did we miss any like larger questions that we said we'd come back to? I, I, no, I, I think um, there wasn't very many questions and Gavin was uh, having a, a very productive discussion um, in the okay. Twitch chat. So I think he was, he was fielding a lot of it. So thank you, Gavin, for that. Even though okay. it's probably like uh, one, uh, probably like starting time for you. Um, yep. uh, we will not be live streaming from the bar. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a horrible idea. Um, if anyone could press the go live button. 
let alone switch the scenes and get audio. It wouldn't work. It just we have enough issues as it is, let alone five drunk people. Um, yeah. um I also want to say um, to the people who are fairly new uh, to automate or new to the geek cast or anybody out there, you know, or people we've known for like a month or five years. Um, if you have any questions at any time over anything that I've gone over today, um, whether it's before or after the recording has been made available, um, just please know that I do try to keep myself incredibly available uh, throughout the community uh, as much as I can. Um, obviously, we all get busy during the day, but uh, just know that I am, you know, totally open for like private messages and questions and stuff like that. If you feel as though it will be a question that's beneficial for more than just yourself, hit me up in the networking channel in MSP Geek. Um, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and I'm, please keep I'm, in mind that he works for a living. <laughs> please, please don't spam yeah. him with, with with all your questions every 20 seconds um yeah yeah i mean if i don't get back to you straight away you know honestly it's probably best to to just ask in the networking uh channel because while martin is the end all be all for all networking information and automate and in general um you're welcome for that uh there are other people who may be able to help you as well so yeah and uh yeah i really need to change my buzzwords and um in Slack. <laughs> you do now, because now everyone knows them. Yeah, um, that's funny. But it's uh, Citrix and Probe, they're my triggers. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you know, I was, I very nearly, uh, very nearly brought up a Netscaler uh, UI this evening, but I, uh, I resisted not to. But sorry, had to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, thank you guys for stopping out. Uh, we're pretty much done. Um, we're pretty much yeah. just hanging out now. Um, yep. So, I mean, if you have any questions, for those who people who just happen to stumble upon YouTube or Twitch, um, we do have a giant forum, uh, mspgeek.com. We do have a massive Slack channel. Um, I think it's join.mspgeek.com, I think is the way to get in. Uh, if not, it's on the website. Um, and... Uh, there's currently just over 4,200 individual accounts signed up for Slack. Um, and it's really, really active. So, uh, thank everyone, um, for stopping by and, uh, join us in the Geekcast channel. Um, we're here pretty much all the time. I live in that channel, even though no one ever talks because we don't have <laughs> Geekcasts often enough, unfortunately. Um, yeah. but we're trying to change that. We have done like three times as many, uh, geek cast than we did last year so uh props to everyone uh mainly mindy who may or may not be listening at the moment um for pushing everyone uh we will try to be better on our notices we will try to be better uh uh you know just be better in general be more professional as far as our streaming goes and our quality goes um which is what we want to do um we didn't have as many issues today some weird issues with uh just Nothing that was uh, that I could knew what the problem was, but that's great. A um, couple of audio things, but uh, we're we're getting better. Um, oh, um, sorry. Last thing I want to say uh, just before we wrap up here, um, I mentioned a SQL statement earlier. Yep. Uh, if you throw uh, that, I'll put it on the uh, public repo. We'll put that. Oh, perfect. I was just about to say uh, we'll put that on the public repo. And essentially, what this will do, uh, I tell you what. I'm going to run it right now so you can all see it. Um, so just so you know, uh, do, 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 do. how can I do this? Let's go to templates, probe templates. All right, so that's what the tree looks like now. That's very nice. But let's run this SQL. I might as well, you know, I'm going to show you it working. So again, like I said, it's going to put in the device library. So that's right-click, add device. Then it's going to put in the detection template. That's right-click, add detection template. And then obviously at the bottom here, that's where it actually adds the rule. And it partners the right, the correct rule with the correct template, obviously, or else this would be kind of redundant. Um, but here we go. Um, e, control A, F9, 13 queries, 13 successful. That's 
That's always good. And I will refresh this. And there we go. This is essentially what you'll get. Um, feel free to take a screenshot if you really want to. Um, but I basically got it down. And, um, and please ignore the results here right now because obviously I've just run this SQL. Um, but essentially what this is going to do for you is give you a tree just like this. And then, you know, if you've got a, I know Draytech and Adtran are very common in the UK. Um, and then you got QNAP and Synology is everywhere. So this is what you'll get as a starter. And then from there, you can either, as Darren suggested, put in particular series and then the models. I'll just go directly to the models. Dealer's choice. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put this up on the public repo along with the kind of form that I was talking about where we can then start sharing. We will admin that repo, obviously, and then people can just make PR requests. But if you try and put your PRs in like, you know, folders and, you know, keep a structure to it and it'll be much easier to implement for everybody. So, all right, that that's all I had for sure this time. Um, yeah, with that code, you it's just SQL. So you don't have to, have to truncate your entire table. You can just pick the ones you want and just run that insert code. Uh, yeah. Um, the only reason why I have like drops and truncates and stuff is just because, you know, I, I wasn't too concerned, but one thing that I will say again, as I, you know, one, I think Jason, uh, Slagle, uh, he wasn't here for this one. Um, this particular OID for the discovered device, this, this one is hard coded into the remote agent. You cannot change this. You'll see that all of the others though, this UUID, it's randomly generated. They're okay. It's just this first one. And again, I'll call that out when I upload it in the repo. So yeah, that's the only hard coded value that you need. So uh, just follow the structure that's in the, the SQL itself. And then you should be able to, um, you know, pull what you want, check yep. what you want. Um, this is, this is all just high level stuff, right? Is there any subtrees? Like do you go like Cisco router, Cisco, you go um, like super deep? No, yeah, not for so. this one. It's fine. I, I was just checking. Um, so I yeah. mean, we were open to PRs, um, uh, which is a pull request for GitHub. Um, basically, uh, just you can just Google it. It's, they're really easy to do, um, and we'll review it. And if we see it meets our standards, then we'll uh, accept the pull request, and it will go up to everyone's availability. Um, and with us having a public repo, people can fork it and change it and alter it and edit it, which is very important for community stability. Yep. Um, there was another thing. Um, Nope, it's gone. Never mind. It's getting late. Boom, done. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All um, right, guys. Well, yeah, thank you very much uh, for putting up with me tonight, uh, going through all this stuff. I know it's not easy. Um, can't wait to see the people that will be there next week. It's going to be an awesome Automation Nation Explore uh, this year. Uh, oh, little self-promotion uh, self, uh, area. Myself and Darren are hosting the Scripting 301. Uh, if I remember right, it's Friday morning and Saturday afternoon. So just FYI on that. And uh, yeah, just again, let us know what kind of content you need, what content you want. And uh, the admins here will uh, will do our best to uh, facilitate uh, what it is that you're after. Especially so, if you want to host it. Yeah, we, yeah. We do have... Um, both automate and manage and I think control uh, test instances so you don't have to use your company's um, information uh, so if you you know hey if you have a topic you think you can cover very well um, write up a quick summary of what you want to discuss how you want to discuss it and let an admin staff know and uh, we'll get you set up and running and uh, we'll get a date set and everything it's they're they're not uh they're they're honestly not difficult. The the worst part is dealing with all the problems that crop up because this is IT. It's what we deal with for a living. Um, and we all know technology is flawless and it's always human error. Um, so it's uh, if if anyone wants to host one of these, anyone wants to uh, suggest topics, feel free. Um, we'll always look at them and stuff. Um, 
So, uh, and with that note, uh, I don't see any more questions anywhere. I'm going to hit the end button, uh, <laughs> which is the best button because that means I can stop talking to everybody. Um, and, uh, it's going to be great. So, uh, from all of us here at, uh, Geekcast Studios, which is in like 1700 different places, um, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>